Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We have another unboxing today from OSG and designer Kevin Zucker. This is a, a new edition game that was released in the series, the Library of Napoleonic Battles. The series dates back all the way to the SPI days and the great game Napoleon's Last Battles, um, also by Kevin Zucker, but for Lost Battles, which is Grossbieren, Katzbach, Kulm, and Denevitz, um, two battles, four battles of the Dresden campaign in 1813. Um, interesting battle and this has been out of print for a long time and I'm glad to see that it is back in print now in a handsome new box and it has just showed up from OSG. OSG does not shrink wrap their stuff which doesn't bother me in any way so we do have a little bit of a shipping ding there which is a little irritating but I'm not gonna lose my mind over it either so as long as the insides are okay and they certainly should be. All right so let's pull everything apart and to see what we get. I have a little slip here. That says, inspected by Caveman Andy. Thank you, Caveman Andy. All right, so we have maps. We have counters. We have series rules, uh, version 7.35, same as in um, the brand new release, Bonaparte in the Quadrilateral. Now, uh, this also brings the Four Lost Battles game up to the modern standard, too. So the rule book is a 24-page, um, matte finished, 20, uh, fairly thick paper, full color, not, you know, incredibly prolific use of color, but good use of color. Um, looks good. Uh, I am reasonably happy with this rule book. The rules themselves are quite straightforward. This is a relatively easy game to learn. Um, so that is the series rule book. And then there is the, what I'm probably going to call the playbook, but which is called the study folder. Um, Napoleon's debacle on the Elbe. Okay. 23rd August to 6th September 1813. So let's dig into this. Now, usually there's a uh, a small amount of game-specific rules here, uh, but the series itself is strong enough and built on a strong enough foundation that it doesn't need much. So here we have Grossbieren. Okay. Uh, we have the Battle of the Katzbach, and then there's a Katzbach scenario on... This August 17th, the hypothetical uh, variation. Um, here is the Battle of Kulm. Here's the Battle of Denevitz. And here we have a campaign game. Uh, so this looks like it's... I could be wrong, and I'd be happy to be. It, this looks like one of those games where each battle is played successively in chronological order. Um, so we'll have to take a look at that. So, yeah, and it looks like there's four maps. So you're not playing the campaign on one huge contiguous um, map area, which is the case in some of the games in the series. Uh, okay, so here's the, the historical notes. These are always really good to read. Uh, these are some... some I, I'm always happy with Kevin's historical notes, let me put it that way. We're probably going to get a bibliography back here as well. Indeed, we do. Uh, which includes Kevin Zucker's own The Struggle of Nations. That's an old um, operational game that, that he designed for Avalon Hill back in the day. At least I assume it was originally released from Avalon Hill. That's the one I have. Some of those were actually originally done by OSG, which was active even in the 70s. Notes to combat tables. Here's more combat tables. Now we're going to have a huge pile of player aids here, which is going to include turn record tracks for basically each scenario. Um... So Grosbieren, Katzbach, Kolm, Denevitz. Uh, here are the setup cards. These are not in full color like the um, ones for Bonaparte and the Quadrilateral are. These are the old style ones. Um, you know, for all I know, these are the original ones <laughs> that are just getting repurposed in this new box. That's, that's plausible. Okay, here's our casualty tracks. These basically track morale by formation. Um, we'll look at those and see if we get those in, in the counter mix as well. Here's one of the player aids. That This one has the main tables on it and then the explanations on the back. Here's holding box displays, weather tables, uh, French fog of war. So there'll be a bunch of little pieces of paper in here that tell us how to use the universal card deck. 
Um, I mentioned this in the Bonaparte and the Quadrilateral video, but the, each of these games used to come with its own deck of cards, which is an optional rule. But I think they are designed that you play with the cards and not play without the cards. Um, and that has been phased out, and there is now a universal deck, which is no longer included in the games. You can order it individually from OSG, or if you have Napoleon's Wheel, the universal card deck came in Napoleon's Wheel. All right, so there are... Let's take a look at the maps. There are four maps, all of which I believe are half-sized maps. So let's look at the Denovitz map. And I really personally like the uh, the art style that we see on these maps. I think it's attractive. Period. It, it, it evokes a good period feel. This is, a, of course, a much more wooded area around Calm. There's another one. Some of these are, and, and you know, these smaller map scenarios. A lot of these have fairly small maps. Uh, a lot of the, the games or the individual battles throughout the entire series are on relatively small maps. Some of them are on big map areas as well. Uh, but if you're a short table space um, or don't want to set a game up for a month at a time, um, a lot of these battle scenarios are really attractive. They can be played easily in one sitting and they're very satisfying to play. And then here is the Gross Biren uh, map. So uh, the maps all look great. Very happy with that. At some point, I will come up with a storage solution for the cards, but I don't really have that yet. For, for now, I just have to raid the uh, Napoleon's wheel box when I need the cards. All right, so we have two counter sheets on a... So there's a lot of units here, actually. Um, there's roughly twice as many units in this game as there are combat units as there is in Napoleon and the Quadrilateral, uh, but the same number of counters. So these are on a thick brown core stock. I notice no registration or... Let's check the back side, I guess. Uh, or unclarity issues or anything like that. They look great to me. So the French are obviously going to be in blue. Uh, these may be French allies of some kind. Saxony and Württemberg, actually. Uh, plus Bavarians, Badens, Westphalians, uh, Hessians, so on and so forth. And then over here, we're going to get the Prussians in this sort of steely gray. Um, some Austrians. These are Austrians, right? Uh, yes. Austrians and Italians, anyway. We get some Swedes with under Bernadotte, who was active in this campaign as the Swedish commander and not as a French ally, if you don't know. I could do an entire video on Bernadotte. Um, and then here we have a whole bunch of Russians. And we have this one Russian core marker as well. Um, Russian commander at this point, I think, is Barclay de Tolly, um, who was one of the better Russian commanders, uh, in my opinion, um, in the Napoleonic period. So... Uh, this is a long-awaited uh, addition to my personal library in that uh, this was the only volume in the series that I did not have until now. I now have them all. I don't have every single Kevin Zucker Napoleonic game because there's a lot of uh, operational volumes that were published by various publishers at various times and are kind of hard to run them all down. But I have a bunch of them, and they're good too. Uh, but but this is where OSG is is really hitting a lot of home runs, in my opinion, right now, is with the Library of Napoleonic Battle series. So um, check this out uh, if you are interested um, in that. And you can you can search for Operational Studies Group or I think NapoleonGames.com. Um, so new release from Kevin Zucker and OSG. Hopefully you found this video useful. If so, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell icon to get notified when new content comes out. If you'd like to help support Art Wolf Slayer, it'd be greatly appreciated if you would check out the links in the video description to the Patreon, the merch store, and the Ko-Fi. Until next time, thanks again for watching, and happy wargaming.